So let's go ahead and get started. Um, our first speaker is Dr. Kelly Ruggles, and she's going to give us uh, some insights on how to de decipher breast cancer using proteogenomics. So today I will be uh, describing some of the bioinformatics methods that we are developing for deciphering breast cancer proteogenomics uh, and focusing on uh, biomarker discovery. So breast cancer is a leading cause of cancer death among women, uh, makes up 23% of cancer cases and 14% of cancer-related deaths. And the cl classic breast cancer biomarkers, uh, such as HER2, estrogen receptor, and progesterone receptor, have been successful in classifying tumor samples as well as determining treatment. However, the lack of breast cancer biomarkers is still a major obstacle in early detection, diagnosis, and treatment. And many groups have focused on discovering uh, proteins with altered expression in plasma for early detection. Uh, we are focusing on identifying proteins with altered expression in tumor tissue and tumor-specific tumor proteins um, as target strategies. This work is done um, as part of the Clinical Proteomic Tumor Analysis Consortium, or CPTAC, which is made up of many different institutions throughout the US. The goal of CPTAC is to accelerate the understanding of cancer through quantitative proteomic workflows. Uh, this work is also done in collaboration with the TCGA, or the Cancer Genome Atlas, the goal of which has been for many years to understand the molecular basis of cancer through the application of genomic analysis. So cancer is characterized by altered expression of tumor drivers and suppressors, which result from gene mutations causing changes in protein expression and activity. And we are using cancer proteomics to try and understand some of this genetic variation. And the questions that we're looking to answer using cancer proteomics are whether or not these genomic variants are evident at the protein level. If they are evident, what is their effect on protein function? Additionally, what proteins have just altered expression in tumor tissue, and can these proteins be used as breast cancer biomarkers for disease prevention, prognosis, and targeted therapy? So there is widespread to, uh, tumor genomic variation um, even within the same tumor type. This uh, graphic just shows 24 different breast cancer tumors. Um, around the circle are different chromosomes, so this is genome-wide. We're looking at the whole genome for each tumor. And these lines uh, represent genetic uh, reassembly, so a uh, recombination. So it, it, these lines result in fusions, deletions, duplications that can be present also in the proteome. And what you can see here is that there's a wide variation even within all of these different tumor, uh, breast tumors. Additionally, whole genome sequencing studies such as the Thousand Genomes Project have uncovered millions of germline variants between individuals. And I'm stressing this ge genomic heterogeneity because many genomic and proteomic studies typically use a reference database to model the general population, which masks this patient-specific and tumor-specific variation. So we are using a proteomic, genomic, and transcriptomic data from large-scale cancer studies and analyzing them instead in a patient-centric manner in order to get at this, uh, this tumor and patient-specific variation. So um, after we take our samples and digest and do LC-MS-MS, we then identify peptides within the spectra by comparing to a protein database. And as I mentioned, typically this is a reference protein database, and in most cases it, it does a pretty good job of identifying all of the, pep well, the peptides, many of the peptides within the sample. Um, unfortunately, in samples such as tumor, where we have a lot of different vari uh, variants, uh, if we don't have the variants within the protein database, we will not be able to identify them from our, our spectra. So in addition to, in addition to germline variants, um, so these are the uh, variants that exist just between patients, tumors also have somatic variants. Um, they also have fusion proteins and many other variation, var genomic variations that occur within the tumor. And unfortunately, these will not be represented in a reference protein database. So ideally, we would be using a database that has all of the, this genetic uh, variation within the database itself, so we could actually identify these uh, peptides and proteins. So the, the ideal database would contain all of the potential relevant uh, peptides and proteins. 
and, and would not contain too many irrelevant uh, peptides and proteins because if we have too many irrelevant proteins, we're going to decrease our sensitivity. So in order to make an appropriate protein database, we decided to use RNA and genome sequencing data um, from each tumor and create a tumor-specific database from which we could identify tumor-specific and patient-specific peptides from our proteomic analysis. So the breast tumor samples that we're using for this study are uh, patient-derived xenograft tumors, or PDX tumors. These tumors um, are created by taking primary cells from breast tumors and injecting them into immunodeficient mice where they're able to grow. This gives us a hypothetically unlimited quantity of protein, of tumor, because they can, you can continue grafting these into different mice. And um, it can be used to assess drug resistance based on genomic and proteomic makeup, because you can have many mice with the same tumor and look at how they respond to different treatments. So currently, there are 14 of these PDX tumors undergoing proteome analysis. They've already undergone both geno genome sequencing and RNA-seq. And these are um, created and maintained at Washington University in UNC PCC. Um, we're additionally working with uh, TCGA retrospective tumors. So the TCGA has been working, as I mentioned, for many years doing uh, genome sequencing of tumors. They have a very large collection of tumor samples from many different tumor types. They have over um, 900 breast tumors. Uh, we are looking at 95 of these for global and phosphoproteome analysis, which is being done in Steve Carr's lab at the Broad. So this is just an overview of our workflow. Uh, we, again, start with these, tumor, these different tumor types. Um, again, they have already been sequenced. The genome sequencing and RNA-seq has been completed. And currently, um, we are working towards doing both global and phosphoproteomics. So we have developed two pipelines to aid in the um, biomarker discovery and verification of uh, breast cancer biomarkers. So the first pipeline is called QUILTS, and it is our uh, discovery pipeline. What QUILTS does is it takes in the genome and transcriptome information, identifies tumor-specific genomic variation, creates these tumor-specific databases from which we can identify tumor peptides within the proteome. We then do proteomic mapping and integration and incorporate some of our quantitative information, um, after which we can then identify biomarker candidates. Our second pipeline then comes back to um, the, the tumors, and do, we do targeted proteomic studies on these candidates. And we've developed an informatics pipeline that aids in automating this process. Unfortunately, I won't have time to go into this uh, today, so I'm just going to focus on the discovery uh, quilts pipeline. Um, so I just wanted to briefly mention the instruments and methodology that's being used to collect the proteomic data. Uh, at the Broad, I track quantifi quantification using a Q-Exactive for the global and phospho proteomics, and also at WashU and UNC, they're also doing some of this global and phospho proteomics as well. And the targeted studies will be done in Reed Towson's lab at WashU using parallel reaction monitoring mass spectrometry. So in order to develop and validate our quilts pipeline, we use two of the patient-derived xenograft breast tumors. These two tumors come from uh, two different subtypes, a basal-like and a luminal-like. Uh, they have already undergone both whole genome sequencing and RNA-seq. And using this information, we created tumor-specific libraries. Um, I'll go into a little bit of detail about how that was done. So we start with a reference human database. In this case, we used Ensemble. We then um, use the genome sequencing from the non-tumor sample to identify germline variants, and we incorporate these into the database. We then use the genome sequencing and RNA-seq from our tumor sample and identify alternative splicing, somatic variants, and novel expression, and also incorporate this into our database as well. So I'll just, this is just some uh, representation of these uh, these tumor-specific variations. We have alternative splicing. We're focusing on novel alternative splicing, so novel recombination of two exons through exon skipping, uh, novel expression in which there's, there is expression within an intronic or non-coding region. These, oh, sorry, these um, orange represent the RNA-seq reads. Um, we can also find fusion genes in which genes from two different um, either two parts of one chromosome or two separate chromosomes are fused, and we can identify variants, which are single nucleotide changes that can result in single amino acid changes or uh, premature stop codons. So all of this is added to our protein database. 
um, after which we can then um, use this database to identify peptides, and we use three global proteome data sets that were collected at WashU to identify some of these tumor-specific peptides. So um, we do this through the spectral matching, um, taking our spectral matching to our, our specific database. We filter out all of our normal peptides. We are interested in these peptides, and we'll come back to them when we have our quantitative information. But for now, we were just focusing on these novel peptides. And then we, will also, we also map these all back to the genome using a, a tool called PGX, which I'll go into a bit more detail in the following slides. So from this initial analysis, we were able to identify uh, several hundred variant peptides between the two tumor types, novel alternative splicing, as well as um, novel genes in both of the, the basal and luminal t tissues. So we then went on to test some visualization methods for proteomic integration using um, a PGX tool. So PGX is a proteogenomic mapping tool that was created in-house by Manor Ashkenazi and David Fenyo. It's a Python-based tool. It takes in a list of peptides and um, gives an option of a sample-specific protein database, and it maps these peptides onto genomic coordinates. Um, so you, it gives you a bed file with all of your genomic coordinates coordinates within it. And so this uh, uh, opens up a lot of opportunity for looking at things on a proteogenomic level. So I'm going to show a few examples for this. So here um, we are able to map uh, our, all of our genomic and RNA-seq and peptide information um, for the whole chromosome. Um, so here we've binned all of our expression in 10,000 base pair bins. This is actually a ratio of the, two, the expression in the two tumors. Just, um, we're, we're just doing this for our development. Um, so if we can look at copy number variation. We have methylation status information, exon expression, and we've also been able to map our peptides onto the same coordinate system. And you can focus in here and see that there is an increase in exon expression in the RNA-seq data. It looks like there is also an increase in the peptide, and we can focus in on this area and see that, in fact, there is um, an increased level of expression in both RNA-seq and peptides. And of course, um, as I mentioned, these two tumors are, are just being used to develop this tool. Once we have all of our TCGA tumors in our pipeline, we'll be able to look at all of them um, on a genome-wide level with all of the genomic and proteomic information. Uh, we can also look at correlations between proteomics and sequencing. Um, so we've uh, we have plotted copy number versus RNA-seq, which has very low uh, correlation. RNA-seq versus peptide, which has actually a pretty nice correlation. Um, and peptide versus copy number, which again has very low cor correlation. And we're really going to focus in on proteins with differential expression within the TCGA analysis as biomarker candidates and also to cluster tumors into new subtypes. In addition to looking at it on a genome-wide scale, we can focus in on some of these variant peptides that we've identified using our sample-specific database. So here you can see a peptide with a single amino acid change corresponding to a variant. Um, this peptide was identified um, in our global proteome analysis, and the, the um, variant, which you can see here in our genome um, browser, causes a change in the amino acid sequence from T to A. And we were able to identify this peptide, which would not have been identified had we not used our uh, tumor-specific database. We, are, we can also um, look at peptides that uh, are, are show expression in non-coding regions. So here is our ensemble reference gene in blue. In the RNA-seq, we see that there, it's coding for the second exon, but this first exon appears to be starting in an intronic region. And we were able to identify a tumor peptide that actually um, is consistent with this RNA expression. And this is just the spectral evidence for this within our um, proteome analysis. So in addition to just looking at all of the peptides on the genome, we can also incorporate proteome at quantitation levels the RNA-seq quantitation, as well as expression coverage, and we're also adding in the phosphorylated um, peptides. So this is a really nice way of looking at all of the information at once, um, and then following this, we're also going to look at all of the 95 tumors um, as a heat map in terms of their proteomic expression. So this is, uh, this is just visuals from the Cancer Genome Browser. Um, they actually have all of the TCGA analysis already uploaded onto their uh, 
their system, so this is, these are, some of these are the same samples we're working with. They have it for all of the different genome-wide. I've just chosen some um, breast cancer genes, and you can see the gene expression, and you can sort by clinical features. Um, and so we're going to do the same thing with our tumor samples so we can look not only proteogenomic within the sample and then across samples. So just to summarize this pipeline, we've established quilts for the analysis and integration of genomic, transcriptomic, and proteomic information. We've tested our pipeline using two PDX uh, breast tumor samples and identified peptide expression for somatic variants, alternatively spliced forms, and novel expression. We are currently analyzing 95 TCGA breast tumors and 14 PDX samples using this tool. Um, and once this analysis is complete, we will use all the information to create this list of biomarker candidates and verify them by targeted MS. So this is just where we are in terms of the TCGA breast tumor analysis. We have um, created these tumor-specific databases for all 95 tumors, and currently the proteomics is being done um, at the Broad uh, to create this bro proteome analysis, which we can then identify tumor peptides. So um, the next couple of months should be pretty exciting. I'm sorry I don't have the analysis done for you now, but uh, come back next year and we can talk about it. <laughs> um, so with that, I'd like to thank um, my uh, PI, David Fenio, all of the people in the Fenio lab, particularly Mira and Jojan, who helped with the sequencing, um, all of uh, the CPTAC consortium, particularly our collaborators at WashU, Broad, and UNC. Questions? Thank you, Dr. Ruggles. That was a really exciting talk, and I'm pretty sure that we're going to have some questions from the audience. Please do use the microphones. Hi. Uh, a very nice work. So uh, I'm wondering what, how redundant of the protein database uh, if when you build up based on the genome and the RefSec database. Sorry, say that one more time. The redundancy of the uh, protein database when so you start to build up as the uh, genome and the RefSec together. So we don't, I mean, the only things we add in is are, are variant changes. So we don't add back in anything that's already within the database. So it's only if there's a variant change, we'll add that in. And if there's a new alternatively spliced form, we'll add that in. But we don't add in anything that's already within the database. So you don't assemble to the protein level and the C, the final protein ID, which yeah, has so, a form? So we look at whether or not it causes a change in the, pro, the proteome. And then if it does, we add it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So is each uh, proteomics data set searched against its own yes. database from the field? Yes. Yeah. Hi, I noticed that you identified significantly more variants in the luminals versus the basals. Do you see this back at protein level, and is there any functional uh, correlation there? I noticed that also. I'm, I'm not sure why. I'm definitely looking into it, but I don't have a good answer for why that's happening, yeah. Um, so I'm wondering, are you uh, only work on the triptych peptides, or you do multiple enzyme digestion? We're just looking at triptych right now. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, thanks. I have actually one question okay, for you, great. too. <laughs> um, traditionally, so working with the xenografts, you have, you're working with both mouse and human proteins. How did you deal with that in this workflow? So with the xenografts, we do incorporate mouse proteins as well. So when we um, search, we search against mouse and human, and then we filter out normal mouse and human before looking for the variant peptides. So we are taking that into account, yeah. Well, great, thank you very much for Thanks. an excellent talk.